Hi, physics students. Um, welcome to the first video for topic 4.3, which is wave characteristics. Again, there's a lot of overlap between these different uh, subtopics in topic 4. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is I'm going to talk briefly about wave fronts and rays, which we've talked about before, and then uh, go over, um, again, some of the concepts and relationships between amplitude and intensity. Okay, all right, so I just want to define to you this, this physics term called wave front, and yes, it is one word. You probably won't find it in the dictionary as such, but a wave front is basically a line joining points that are in phase on a wave, okay? So here are two depictions of waves that you should be familiar with. This one on the right maybe more so than the other one, okay? Uh, remember a wave has peaks and troughs, uh, at least as depicted as a transverse wave, okay? These wave fronts, you can picture them as... Um, as lines that are that are perpendicular to the their straight lines that are perpendicular to the velocity of the wave and usually what we do is we line up wave fronts with um, peaks of waves you can also line them up with troughs of waves and so forth but the point is that um, the distance between wave fronts is clearly the wavelength okay so here you see the wave fronts are vertical the wavelength is the distance between two peaks uh, with water waves with ocean waves like this you can see there's a wave behind and a wave breaking right here okay so if we wanted to depict these by wave fronts we would just draw two uh, horizontal parallel lines like this okay now there's another geometrical construction in our study of waves that you need to know and that's called a ray and what a ray is is it's a line that's perpendicular to the wave fronts in the direction of wave travel in other words you can think of the rays as being almost like velocity vectors, of course, because they're pointing parallel to those velocity vectors. So in these two diagrams, the ray up here would be like that, where this is a right angle as seen from an angle. Um, and then down here with this ocean wave, it's obviously pointed straight inwards towards shore where the waves are breaking, okay? Now, wave fronts and rays are very important when picturing what happens to waves when they travel between media. And we've talked about this a little bit in class already. And I'm gonna define to you right now uh, this term refraction. What refraction is, is it's the change in direction of a wave when it's going from one medium to another due to a change in the speed of the wave, okay? Now, all waves refract, okay? And this, this GIF here is showing you, you should probably recognize um, this line right here as being Snell's Law, okay? We've talked about Snell's Law um, a little bit. Turns out that when you shine a laser beam from from uh, air into block glass, what happens is that that laser beam actually changes its direction because its speed changes direction once it's inside the glass, okay? Now, in terms of wave fronts and rays, you can think about it like this. You have a bunch of wave fronts coming in like this, okay? What happens at the medium is they change direction. Now, the frequency does not change, but the velocity does. So therefore, because of the wave equation, lambda changes. So what I've done in red here is I've shown um, and that GIF will replay and show those green waves, okay? What I've done is I've shown the different wavelengths in medium one, which you can think of as air, and then you see how the wavelengths get smaller in medium two, okay? So I've labeled them uh, lambda one and lambda two here, okay? And I've also drawn the rays, which show, um, which show the tendency for it to refract towards the normal, as we talked about before. Now here's the wave equation again. Um, because lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2, which you can see from this diagram, and the frequencies are the same, the only way that that can be true is if the speed in medium 1 is greater than the speed in medium 2. And you can see that by the wave equation if you think about the very simple algebra uh, with V equals F lambda. Now, it turns out that all waves refract, again, so light, water, um, seismic waves, any kind of wave you can think of, sound waves, they all refract, okay? Now in the case of water waves, they change direction from one depth to another. So water waves refract when they go from a shallower region to a to a deeper region and vice versa, okay? It turns out that water waves actually go slower in shallow water, all right? Um, so you can imagine how complicated the motion of waves, for example, in the ocean is when you have, uh, think about the, the greatly varying topography on the bottom of the ocean, on the ocean floor, okay? Now, light waves, they change direction when entering a more dense substance, which we've alluded to in class. So it turns out that light actually slows down in the denser substance, okay? Um, and we've done some stuff with lasers and, and, and water and block glass and so forth. This is a really important slide. Um, you're going to want to refer back to 
to this really nice um, diagram and this really nice little GIF movie from time to time, especially also in the next topic, 4.4, where we're going to study Snell's Law in a little more detail. Okay? Now, for waves that are made by a point source, so if you think about, like, for example, a stone dropping in water or a dripping faucet into a sink, the wave fronts are actually circles, okay? And, and the radial vectors are then called called rays, right? So same idea, right? So these are not sort of planar waves. They're waves that go out in a radial direction. In other words, in the positive r hat direction, if you remember the unit normal vector uh, or the unit, um, the radial unit radial vector, okay? I want you to note that the wave fronts and rays are still at right angles to one another at all points. Even though the wave front is, is circular, um, still at those infinitesimally small points in space, the ray and the wave front are at 90 degrees to one another. Okay. Now in 3D, it gets a little more complicated, um, but not that much more complicated. You just have to extend your understanding to one more dimension. All the same concepts still hold, except for in 3D, the wave fronts, think about... Um, sound, for example, extending in all directions, right? The wave fronts are actually concentric spherical shells, and the distance between concentric spherical shells is, in fact, the wavelength, okay? And again, the number of spherical shells that pass a certain point in space per unit time is called the frequency, okay? All right, so here's a first example, a past paper question. Go ahead and pause the video and spend a little time working through this one. Okay, so this diagram shows a series of plane wave fronts, as might be produced in a laboratory experiment with a ripple tank. The waves are traveling from region A to region B, and the diagram is drawn to scale. Uh, they want you to draw and label the wavelengths in regions A and B. Well, that's pretty easy, right? Wavelengths here, wavelength there, okay? Now, you should be able to infer, simply from the original diagram, um, that that region B, well, if this is water, region B is shallower than region A, right? Because the, um, because the waves are going slower in region B, okay? Anyway, here's lambda A, lambda B. Um, they want you to draw rays in regions A and B. There you go. The wave fronts are already provided for you. What's the approximate ratio, lambda A to lambda B, okay? Uh, it's about twice, right? So the ratio is about two. If the frequency of the waves is the same in both regions, would the speeds V A and V B change? Of course they would, okay? Um, v, v is going to decrease, okay, uh, which we've seen time and time again, all right? Um, so this is kind of the depth at which you'll be, you'll be asked to solve uh, problems on, on, the, on the IB exam. It'll be a little more complicated than this, but this gives you a flavor of what to expect, okay? And again, this enables the wave to main, maintain the same frequency. Okay. okay, I want to talk a little bit about amplitude and intensity. We've again alluded to these ideas before. I want you to remember that all waves carry energy, and the rate at which energy is carried is called power. Okay, And power, of course, as you know from previous topics, is energy per unit time, or delta E over delta T. The SI unit of power is a watt. It's a joule per second. Okay, Now, a 60-watt light bulb radiates energy in all directions. Okay, It's the energy in the form of, ele of electromagnetic radiation, which happens to be in the visible part of the spectrum according to humans there right so what that means is that 60 joules of energy are emitted each second and spread out in all directions okay that's what the 60 W means uh, on the top of a light bulb okay if you consider this energy to be spread out over an area okay then clearly the energy decreases in intensity the farther away you get from the light bulb in other words a light bulb as appeared from a distance is much less bright than it is when you bring it right in front of your face okay so if you think about this in terms of intensity intensity is clearly power per unit area but more specifically it's the power incident on a surface per unit area okay um, incident being at right angles right okay so I equals P over a. Don't be confused by this A. We also use capital A for amplitude, but here I'm talking about an area. And of course, the SI unit for intensity would be a watt per square meter. Okay. Now, in a wave, this is, I'm, I'm trying to bring back intensity to the idea of waves, okay? You know that waves carry energy, right? And the greater the amplitude of a wave, the more energy that's being carried through that wave, right? So it turns out that this may be um, sort of common sense to you. The greater the amplitude, the greater the energy. The greater the energy, the greater the power. And the greater the power, the greater the intensity, because they're all related as shown on this slide. Okay, so again, in a wave, amplitude, greater amplitude, greater energy, greater power, 
greater intensity. Okay, now if you think about intensity as power over area being um, p over pi r squared, okay, in the case down here of like for example sound waves, right, you can see um, the, 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 the faded gray indicates that the intensity or the amplitude is lessened as it spreads out across a room, for example, okay, and the radius is that simply the distance of a particular wave from the original source of the sound, radius r, Okay, um, you can see that this wave, the sound wave, for example, and its associated energy becomes, quote, less intense as its energy is spread out over a greater area. We see this with all kinds of waves, okay? So a pebble thrown into a pond, you see this, the waves, initially you start off with a, with a significant amplitude, and that amplitude goes down as the wave radiates outwards because the, the energy initially in those waves um, is, spreads out. The energy is still there, it's just less concentrated than it was before, okay? In this case, if you consider this dashed line to be the line of equilibrium, um, and you consider this to be the amplitude either here as defined here or here, you can see, um, actually maybe it's not so obvious, you will not have to derive this uh, in the IB, but you should know that intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared, okay? And you can see up above from this equation that intensity is proportional to to 1 over the radius squared, okay? So you should know these two relationships. And in fact, these two relationships are given to you in your IB data booklet, okay? And I think this is I is proportional to, I think it says X to the negative 2, but X is just the distance, the radial distance from the from the point uh, where, the, where the wave emanated from, okay? All right, try this example on your own. Example 2 deals with sound. Okay, so we have 12 times 10 to the fifth watts of sound power passing perpendicularly through two surfaces, okay, so two people at different distances from the speaker. These surfaces have different areas. Determine the sound intensity at each surface and discuss why listener 2 hears a quieter sound. Well, listener 2 hears a quieter sound, obviously, because the energy is more spread out over a greater area at that point, but I1 and I2, I get different values. This is what I get. And my formal answer to that last question was, in a given time, less energy passes through the air and enters the ear of listener 2. This means that the amplitude of the longitudinal waves for listener 2 is less than for listener 1. In other words, the compression of air molecules at position 2 is less than at position 1. And here's a nice, cute FET simulation with this guy um, th um, sitting in front of a speaker. And you can see that, in fact, the intensity or amplitude of those waves gets less as they spread out through the room to the right.